Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about Windows versus Linux. And in fact, I'm going to compare Windows to two different versions of Linux. I've got open here in separate windows. I'm using what's called a virtual box so that I can run. I've got my Windows 10 in the background and I've got uh, one version of, win of uh, Linux running in this window and another version running in this window. So basically I have three operating systems running at the same time. And what I'll do is I will talk about, um, I will compare Windows with actually both of these versions and maybe help you decide whether you want to make the move over to Linux. Uh, I assume if you're watching this, you're probably a long time Windows user like me. And uh, you probably have some issues with Windows and you're wondering if maybe there's another operating system out there that might be better suited for what you're doing. So let me just give you my idea of the things I hate about Windows and it would make me jump over to another operating system. Uh, first of all, security issues. If you've been using Windows for any amount of time, you know security issues are huge. You gotta worry about malware, you gotta worry about viruses, you gotta have different sets of software installed, you always have to worry about Windows updates for securities. It is a huge pain. You're always worrying about somebody taking over your computer and that's a big issue. I hate that. Uh, there's so many people in this world who have Windows, so anybody who wants to be a hacker just grabs their Windows machine and starts hacking and everybody knows Windows and everybody can hack Windows. So uh, that's one of the main things I hate about Windows. Um, the other things are annoying, useless features and emphasis on mobile. You know, every time Windows comes out, there's more and more features and more and more emphasis moving over to a uniform platform that works on desktops and mobile. And now it's getting to be where it's more focused on mobile and you've got things like Cortana and you've got all these features that, you know, uh, Microsoft tries to hype as things you really need. But for me, I end up disabling them. Um, I'm not interested in the mobile stuff. I, I basically am a desktop. I, my, my real computer use is on the desktop. I do software development and all this stuff is just an annoyance. I have to turn it off and um, it really makes it a challenge to just do basic stuff. In my view, an operating system should sit in the background. It shouldn't have all this, these features. The purpose of an operating system is to allow you to do to run your applications. I don't I'm not interested in all this other stuff that I have to s disable. And of course, there's the constant updates, the cost. They come out with a new version. Uh, at least they used to come out with new versions and charge you, you know, advertising, forcing you to to um, use Xbox stuff and just all of this stuff that they kind of force on you drives me nuts. Uh, and if you've been using uh, Windows for any amount of time, difficulties with network file sharing, my goodness, networking cannot be that difficult. Um, I've been using it since the 90s, the 80s, and still networking, setting up networks, setting up file sharing across networks, getting all access privileges, absolute mess. So these are some of the major things I dislike about Windows. Uh, the list goes on and on, and I'm sure you can add some stuff, but these are some big ones that I'd love to get rid of by moving to another operating system. So what about Linux? How does it stack up with those things? Well, security issues, the perception at least, is that Linux, really, you don't have much to worry about with security. Again, that's the perception. Um, in fact, Linux is the largest installed base of, of operating systems in the world. Uh, all the Androids, all the servers have Linux or based on Linux. Um, but you can make a case that now you don't really have to worry about um, security issues nearly as much as you do with Windows. Will that be the case in the future? Uh, nobody knows. But for now, I guess you could you could say Linux wins in the security area, at least the perception is. Um, annoying, useless features, definitely Linux wins. Um, you don't have to worry about Linux giving you all this commercial stuff and all these updates uh, because it's an open source and free software and nobody's out, at least generally not out trying to push um, advertising. Constant updates and cost, again, not that big an issue. Of course, it's always free, it's open source. In terms of difficulties though, uh, like networking and file sharing, Linux can be worse or much worse, depending on what version. 
Uh, and we're going to talk about um, one version, Ubuntu, which I find to be horrendously difficult. So um, I think Windows, in terms of difficulty, even if it's difficult in Windows, you can look for huge difficulties in Linux. So now what do I like about Windows? Well, there are some things, you got to give credit to Windows for some things. It's popular, everybody's got it, it's uniform. If you have a problem, you can get a solution real quick, everybody uses it. Um, there's like one or two versions hanging around of, of Windows. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, having special stuff. There's tons of software available. Uh, you have to give it to Microsoft, to Windows. There is just infinite amounts of software available for Windows and a lot of it's free. And honestly, it's relatively easy to use. You don't have to do command line stuff, which you may have to do in other operating systems. So it, it relatively, it is easy to use. Uh, it's clear that, that Microsoft especially has made a lot of software development uh, applications and libraries available for free that are really very good. So in that aspect, I think Windows has done a really nice job. And of course, like most of us, I'm used to it. And you're probably used to Windows too, and you've, you've figured out how to get around a lot of stuff. So there are some good things about Windows. How does Linux stack up? Uh, uniformity, no. Linux is not uniform. There are hundreds and hundreds of versions of Linux. It's open source. Anybody can grab the code for Linux and write their own version. And there are hundreds of versions out there. So it is not uniform. If you have a problem, you can go online and nobody knows the answer because they're not, they haven't had the problem with that particular version. It, it just, it's not uniform. You're not going to get uniformity. Uh, Windows has tons of software available. What about Linux? Well, it's got a lot, but that's a big issue. You need to, you need to decide whether the, the applications you use on Windows are available in Linux. In many cases they will be, but in many cases they might not be. You may have to get an equivalent version and download it, install, and learn how to use it. So that's a big issue and you may be okay, but maybe not. Especially if you have some specialty software, uh, it may not be available and there may not be an equivalent available in Linux. Um, Windows, relatively easy to use, no command line stuff, not so in Linux especially depending on the version. Uh, you may be okay with some other versions, uh, easy to use, but it depends a lot. So I think Windows wins out in the easy to use in general. Um, software development environment, you're not going to get that in Linux. You're going to get some, some free stuff. And then for most people, no, you're not going to be used to Linux. Uh, it's going to be something new you're going to have to learn from scratch. So let me give an example uh, about some of the challenges you may encounter with uh, Linux. Here I've got, like I say, I've got one version of Linux called Ubuntu. And honestly, I don't recommend you use Ubuntu, but I'm just showing it here for example. And this looks kind of Windows-like. You've got a toolbar, it's called the launcher down the bottom. But when you, you, when you install Ubuntu on your uh, machine, this launcher or toolbar will be along the left-hand side. To me, that was annoying. I didn't like that. So I figured, okay, there's, there's a quick and easy way to change that. You know, maybe you come down here and right-click on this toolbar, and it will give you an option to bring it down to the bottom. So I'm right-clicking, nothing's coming up. So you got to figure out, how am I going to move that toolbar down here? It should be easy, right? Well, it turns out for Ubuntu, what you have to do is you have to fire up what's called a terminal window, also called a console or a DOS window in, in the old Windows versions. And you have to type in this line of code. G settings space set space com dot canonical dot unity dot launcher space launcher dash position space bottom. And you run that line and it will change your, uh, your um, toolbar and put it on the bottom. Now, come on. That is kind of ridiculous. And depending on the version of uh, Linux you run, you may get a lot of that. Uh, you may have to do a lot of command line stuff to get basic stuff done. 
uh, especially Ubuntu. I am not a fan of Ubuntu. I don't like Ubuntu. Uh, it's very popular, but you get a little bit too much of that. So personally, I don't recommend Ubuntu. If you're looking for a Windows-based version of Linux, I much recommend what's called Mint, M-I-N-T. And in fact, I recommend a version of Mint called Mint Mate, M-A-T-E. And that, um, that seems to work a lot better. There's also a Cinnamon version that we will talk about in the next video. Uh, but that has some challenges. It's not quite as nice in my experience as Mate. So um, basically to me, that is my bottom line on Windows versus Linux. Um, I, you know, if you want to play with a new operating system, uh, yeah, I would, I would suggest that you fire up, uh, you download and install this uh, Oracle Virtual Box and you can install the operating system in a window and you can install three different or four different operating system and try them out. And I'll go later on, show you how to configure that and set it all up. But uh, just keep in mind, you may not find a perfect replacement for Windows. Um, so you, you need to just try it out and see if it works for you. So I hope that helps. The next, uh, the next video we'll talk about setting up and configuring your Linux in a virtual box and how to do the configuration to allow you to access your USB drives and your network shares and that kind of thing. So hope this helps. Take care and have a good day.